Hey, I'm Seth and I'll unbox pretty much anything. And today I'm unboxing something which just came in the mail that I've been looking forward to for about a week now. And that's the brand new Apple AirPods Max. But if this is your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit that notification bell as well so you guys can see more videos just like this. And also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. And of course, if you would like to grab anything mentioned in today's video, I've left affiliate links in the description below. However, in the case of the AirPods Pro, uh, they're really back ordered for like three months at this point. So you might have some trouble grabbing it, especially if you're trying to grab it before Christmas. But without further ado, let's start digging right into these headphones and see what they look like in person. Because honestly, for a $550 set of headphones, my expectations are like insanely high. So interestingly enough, it looks like the way that you open the shipping packaging is actually by pulling this little tab right here, which I've never seen done before. Let's do this. Apple's always really good with their packaging, whether it's shipping packaging, whether it's just their standard retail packaging, but hold up, this is cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually kind of sick. So here are the headphones inside the shipping box right here. I pre-ordered these, I think it was like 30 minutes after they came out. So because I did that, I was able to secure a pair for me on release day. Um, they said they'd come between the 15th and the 17th, and obviously they came on the 15th, which I'm really happy about. I obviously went with the space gray pair because I feel like out of all the pairs that they're dropping, it's the only color that I would really consider rocking. The silver one was fine, but the other colors like the blue and the salmon and I think the olive, like they just weren't really anything that I'd want to spend $550 on. But this black pair is the one that I think I could I could rock the most. So if you couldn't tell, this is the packaging for the AirPods Max. You've got a picture of the AirPods on the front. You've got a picture of the AirPods with the smart case on the back. And of course, yes, it does look like a bra. I'm not gonna lie about that. Everyone's already said it. You guys already know, but it really does. On the sides of the box, you've got the Apple logo on both sides. And then on the top of the box, AirPods Max. Weird naming scheme, but you know what? They're sticking with that AirPods branding, so. Go for them, I guess. And on the bottom, you've got some barcodes and tech specs and things like that. But let's open this guy up. And the way that it looks like you do it is by pulling this tab right here on the left side. This is so great. This is the first video I haven't needed an unboxing knife or unboxing pair of scissors in a minute. Apple is really looking out for the unboxers. Okay, let's pull off this plastic. There we go. Oh, so they've actually embossed the print on the front of this box. So it kind of comes off the front of the box. Gives it a slight three-dimensional look, which I'm really into. That's a nice touch. Again, Apple kills it with their packaging. But let's slide off the top of the box here and see how it looks. There we go. This is what $550 gets you. <laughs> okay, so here they are, the Apple AirPods Max. I'm gonna put them off to the side. We'll get to them in a second. Underneath the AirPods Max, you've got what seems to be a instruction kit, or I guess quick startup guide, and probably some Apple stickers, some AirPods Max safety and handling information, some regulatory compliance information, boring stuff. Are there any stickers in here? No, doesn't look like it. And then we've also got the USB-C to lightning cable right here. Now, unfortunately, you have to have an Apple USB-C wall wart. I guess you don't have to have an Apple one, but you have to have a USB-C wall wart in order to charge these, or you have to plug them into a USB-C computer. Um, I really don't love this. I wish they would give you the, uh, the wall wart. I feel like this is really cheap, especially when you buy a $550 pair of headphones, but it is what it is. We knew this was gonna happen. I mean, at this point, what do you expect? I mean, they didn't even include one with the new iPhone, so, you know. No surprise there. But let's get to the headphones themselves. It looks like the smart case is actually wrapped in some sort of like wax paper to keep it protected. So let's pull this off first. These headphones look sick. Okay, so let's pull off this wax paper. There we go. Here is the smart bra <coughs> case. <laughs> it seems to be made of a very similar material to what they use on like their, uh, their smart keyboards. It's got that sort of like rubbery satin finish on the outside and then the inside you've got sort of a suede which should protect the, uh, the metal, the aluminum of the headphones. Again, shape is kind of ridiculous but it is what it is. It also looks like the flap has a magnet in it so that it can sort of clip itself closed like that. And I think that also actually puts the headphones into sleep mode when you put the headphones in the case which is pretty cool. So, nice. Let's put these off to the side I guess. And then, moment of truth, the headphones themselves. So let's pull off this little plastic protector that are on the ear cups. These are interesting, <laughs> interesting to say the least. I feel like I should take off my wedding ring because I feel like it's gonna scratch these aluminum ear cups. Man, these are cold, like crazy, crazy cold. I've had these inside for at least an hour by this point, but they are like almost frozen how cold these metal ear cups are. So I will say that build quality wise, I mean, this feels crazy premium. Now does it feel $550 premium? 
don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, but it's definitely one of the most premium feeling uh, headphones I've ever seen. And I actually brought these Sony XM4s, which are my standard set of headphones, which I think every tech reviewer has done at this point, just to compare them. And I realize you guys, again, have probably already seen this comparison, but I'm gonna do it again because it's my channel and I do what I want. <laughs> so these are a $350 set of headphones that have some of the best sound quality I've ever heard anywhere. And uh, I mean, their build quality isn't bad. It's plastic, but it's like a satin plastic. It feels really sturdy. I've used these a bunch. I had the XM3s before this. I traveled with them a bunch. I had no issues. I mean, there were, okay, that's not true. I did have one issue. There was actually a plastic clip in one of the uh, the ear cup arms that actually broke and it kind of caused the, the ear cups to kind of flip out and I had to tape it down. It wasn't a huge deal and I think that they fixed it on the XM4s, but that was really the only problem I had. There wasn't actually any um, sound quality problems at all. So I love these headphones. Really, you can get them for a lot cheaper than 350 bucks at this point. I actually will leave an Amazon link to these in the description below because I highly recommend these. And if you're not trying to spend 550 bucks on the Apple headphones, I'd go with these, especially for Christmas. I think you can still get these in stock right now. But the Apple headphones, which are the ones that we're talking about, do feel significantly more expensive. Now, the one thing that concerns me about these is that while they feel expensive, because I mean, they're made of metal, like this is a solid metal construction, they do feel a little delicate. Like I'm afraid to bend these. And I mean, granted, they're on an articulated ball and socket joint right there. So that actually allows for some nice range of movement, but they, they feel delicate. And I think it's because they're so expensive, but this metal right here, it's anodized aluminum, so it can scratch. And I think it will scratch the more that you use these, which is kind of unfortunate. And as nice as this headband is, it doesn't feel like it's gonna last forever. I mean, seriously, every time I accidentally knock my wedding ring into this ear cup, I really think I'm gonna scratch it which uh, is really scary. I think I've, did I already do it? If you don't know what I'm talking about, this metal area has the same finish as like some of the colorful iPods, um, some of the iPads, and also the older metal iPhones. Um, and it can scratch, unfortunately it can. And especially for something like this that should go through a little bit of wear and tear, it probably will scratch. This soft mesh that they're using on the ear cups actually doesn't feel incredibly premium. It's not leather. And I think there was a reason for that. I think it's because this is more breathable and it won't get as dirty. I'm being really critical because it's a $550 set of headphones and I think that's fair. But one thing I do really love about these ear cups is that they've got the R and the L actually stitched into the mesh. I think that's such a cool and subtle touch. And apparently if you decide you wanna switch out these ear cups, they're just magnetized. You can just pull them off like that. It does take a little bit of pull, like it does take some pressure to actually get them off. It's not a huge amount of pressure, but you can do it pretty easily. And if you do end up actually losing one of these or breaking one of these, you can actually buy replacements through Apple for $70. That's not a joke, they're $70. Nothing about these is cheap, nothing at all. But you know what, that's not a bad thing. I do have to say that I love the way that this arm extends. It feels really fluid and it feels really smooth and it actually has a lot of tension, so you really do have to put some pressure into it. It doesn't just slide out easily. And of course, it's this really nice metal, this really shiny steel, which is, it looks incredible. And then the headband, instead of having any sort of cushion up there, you've got more of that mesh that they used on the ear cups. And it's very stretchy and it should actually, I haven't tried these on yet, but it should feel good on your head. So I feel like at this point, let's try them on, see how they feel. I'm not listening to music, I'm just testing if they stay on my head. I actually can't hear anything around me though. Even though they're not turned on, the noise cancellation, or I guess the noise blocking from these ear cups is excellent. It's insane. It is kind of putting a lot of pressure on my ears though, I'm not gonna lie. So they're, they're comfortable, they're very comfortable. Of course, I will be doing a full review on these, so if you guys wanna stay tuned for that, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'll be wearing these for a couple days, really testing out how they feel on your head after extended use, the sound quality, things like that. But some of the other details that I wanna talk about on these headphones before we get into the sound are some of the physical attributes, like the digital crown on the right ear cup, which just seems to be an enlarged version of what's on the Apple Watch. And also the, uh, I'm assuming the power button on the other side of the right ear cup. I mean, if you looked at this from the top, just in sort of a cropped image, you might think that this is actually an Apple Watch just because of how similar the design language is. And according to, I think it was John Prosser, this actually was supposed to have touch sensitive ear cups originally. You were supposed to be able to change the volume and turn things on and off by being able to slide and tap on this aluminum. But apparently due to manufacturing constraints or 
I don't know, some issue that Apple's obviously not gonna tell us. They had to go with physical controls, which honestly, I'm happy about. I much prefer physical controls. I really don't like the touch controls on some of the Bose headphones and of course those Sony headphones. I just, I'm not about it. I feel like physical is, is way better and way easier to use. So if you look around the ear cup, you'll see all these little cutouts, which are all different mics. I believe this headphone actually has eight different mics total, five of which are used for noise cancellation and three of which are used for when you're using phone calls or talking to Siri, things like that. But I mean, I've gotta say, they are very very minimal for what they are. Unfortunately, they don't fold up though. This is about as far as they fold. That kind of sucks. And actually, as I do this, I am very concerned about the finish of the, uh, the metal right here on these corners because they kind of bang into each other a lot and they rub against each other. So that's definitely gonna wear down very quickly. Another detail that I'm noticing is that you've got your lightning port right there on the bottom of the right ear cup and on the left ear cup, you've got this really thin, dark gray metal line, which I'm assuming is the antenna. But at this point, let's pair these with my phone, try them out. See how they sound. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very, very excited about this. I've turned them on, I believe there is a green light that sort of flashes white and green at the same time. These do have an H1 chip in them, so it should be very easy to pair. Okay, so that button that I was clicking on the top was actually the noise cancellation button. So now I'm actually hearing the pass through so I can hear myself talk, which is actually really nice because it's sort of amplifying my voice. You can click it again, you get the nice noise cancellation, which is crazy. According to Apple's website, it should just pop up on my phone. I'm not sure exactly why it's not. Um, <laughs> this might actually be the first time that I've ever used an Apple Quick Start Guide. Hold AirPods Max in your device for on-screen setup. This is embarrassing, because I don't think this is Apple's fault. I think this is my fault. <laughs> I may actually need to update my phone. We're gonna double check that. Okay, I'm gonna cut the video here. I'm gonna update my phone and then try and reconnect it. Okay, so we are back. I've updated my phone. I've also edited the first part of the video and I realized I don't love the way that I look in these headphones. I don't know what it is about them. Maybe it's because I'm just not used to the form factor or the shape but I'm just not feeling it. On the commercials, everyone looked amazing. I'm not a model, so that's probably one of the reasons I don't look that great in these headphones. But with that out of the way, it looks like now that I've got the phone updated, they connected almost instantly, or they at least popped up almost instantly. Okay, so it's asking me to check out the spatial audio, so let's hear it. So stereo audio sounds like it's coming from right and left. Spatial audio sounds like it's coming from all around, which a lot of other headphones do. It's pretty decent on this though, it sounds pretty incredible. Let me turn on the noise cancellation, nice. I mean, it really sounds like I'm in the room with someone playing, you guys can't hear it, but like a, I don't know, like a rhythm stick or something, I'm not sure what it is. 77% charged, probably came at like 80%. Apparently these have 20 hours of battery life, which is great. That's generally what most headphones nowadays have. I believe the Sony's actually have 30 hours of battery life, which I've really enjoyed. I barely ever have to charge them. But now that we've got these headphones set up, let's try and listen to some music, see how it sounds. I'm really excited for this part, so. Also, something else I'm kind of interested in is how much sound bleed there actually is. So I'm gonna play the music in my headphones and we'll see how much the mic actually picks up. So I'm gonna play something that's not gonna get me copyright striked. Uh, let's play my own band. This is full volume. Let's turn it down to medium. I can't hear myself at all. So this is medium volume. I can actually hear myself now a little bit. Let me play something with like some really heavy bass. Sound pretty good. Okay, so the digital crown is volume control. I don't know if I'm yelling. I really don't, I can't hear myself. So clicking the digital crown pauses and plays. I think triple clicking it actually moves the song forward or something or skips to the next one. Oh no, it repeats it. Double skips to the next one, gotcha. These are nice. And when I turn off the, uh, the noise cancellation, I can really hear my voice, which is good. Even with the volume all the way up, I can still hear myself. Okay, so first impressions, I'm really, really impressed with the sound quality. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how much better it is than the Sony's. I've been using the Sony's a lot and they've always impressed me, so it's possible that these are better. I would hope that these are better because these are $200 more expensive. Build quality feels incredible. Again, it feels a little more fragile than I would like, but comfort is excellent. I mean, it really, really feels great on my head. I wore the Sonys for a little bit in between takes and they just didn't cover my ears as well as these did. These just really feel like you've got these pillows around your ears. I mean, it's an incredible, incredible feeling. These are really, really comfortable. I love the comfort. The digital crown for volume control, really nice. And also using it for skipping songs or repeating songs. Um, this button right here at the top for the uh, noise cancellation, again, very easy to use. I mean, it's a solid set of headphones. I mean, that's what you would expect from Apple, right? Um, for 550 bucks, I would hope that it's a solid set of headphones. There are definitely some downsides. Obviously, the main one is the price. 550 bucks is just, I mean, it's insane. But I think the whole idea behind these headphones is not really trying to compete with the Sonys, but trying to create a new class of ultra premium headphones, which I think this does. Obviously, there's like $1,500 uh, professional headphones. I don't think these are those. I think these are sort of prosumers. 
Um, and that's fine. I mean, if you're willing to spend the money on these to get really great sound quality and have, you know, a very Apple aesthetic, go for it. Connectivity wise and function wise, they are very similar to AirPods Pro, except obviously over the ear headphones instead of in-ear headphones. I mean, personally, would I spend the money on these? I don't know. I mean, I did, obviously, but I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up returning these. It's nothing against them. I mean, they're excellent headphones, but that's 550 bucks. That's a lot of money. And I don't know if these are worth it for me. But like I said, I will be doing a full review on these headphones in the very near future, so make sure to stay tuned for that. I do really enjoy them. I think they're excellent headphones, at least from what I can tell from that first impression. But uh, again, it's that price point. That's really the sticking point for me, and I think it will be for a lot of people. So make sure to stay tuned for that review. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. I would love to know your thoughts on the Apple AirPods Max. Let me know whether it's something that you would consider buying, whether it's something that you did end up buying, or whether you think it's just the dumbest thing you've ever seen, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.